What is an effective way to expand your storage on your PC? Well, Racer Z Studios presents the Asus Hyper M.2 V2. Oh, hi there. I'm your host, Racer Z. Now, this particular adapter is going to be really effective at expanding your storage on your machine. What machine are we upgrading? HP Z240. Check out the video outline where we're going to go through unboxing, fitment, and even some teaser content. We have lots of good content coming up. Now, starting with the Asus Hyper. Now, check this adapter out. This is the V2. Be very careful on this. The V2 is PCIe 3.0. It's a little bit more of a dated form factor, but well suited to most modern motherboards. Now, the V2 comes with four NVMe slots that can adapt to one X16 lane. And check out some of the other features there. In the meantime, let's zoom in a little bit check out those uh, key details there. So this supports most of your common NVMe lengths. We have a nice fan to retain some airflow, including four little hard drive LEDs or activity indicators for our M.2 NVMe drives. Now this particular adapter should net a very, very capable set of NVMe. So I guess we'll do the unboxing. You guys ready for the unboxing? Yeah, let's go for it. Let's see what is uh, hiding away. Okay, pretty much what we expected there. Very standard looking packaging, nice anti-static, excellent. And I see a hidden compartment. There's always a hidden compartment. Let's have a look what's in here. Yeah, ooh, warranty, yes, that's important. Uh, we won't read that. And we got some, oh yeah, there's our mounting hardware. We better not forget about that. But for now, okay, we do have four there, that's good. Let's pop this box out of the way and continue with the instructions. Now, very important, if you're not familiar already, we always should read the instruction. Oh, check that out, the uh, VROC hardware key. Those are really cool for those modern machines, but unfortunately not something I can use on my workstation. Okay, not too fluent in the other languages. That'll do for now, well done. Let's go for it. Launching into unwrapping. Now what's hiding away here? That does look almost vacuum sealed, but not quite vacuum sealed. It's okay, we can break through this without any troubles. That does look well packaged and good to see it's anti-static as well. That does help for any potential negatives. Now there's our particular case, aluminium extruded finish. We have air vents and the riser adapter here is not standard. That's just for display purposes, we'll take that off. Now we have an X16 lane. We can actually see the traces on the PCB as well as the allocation to the four M.2 slots. But very important here, we can definitely see all of those lanes of use, unlike something like this, your standard X4 NVMe adapter, which only has X4 connectivity. So only four lanes are being connected up with that M.2 slot. You can actually see the traces there on that board as well. But that's a standard adapter. This one is slightly more impressive, uh, but it still only has X4 connectivity. So there's only one NVMe. And, uh, ooh, that one's a SATA connector, so a little bit different, the NGFF form factor of NVMe drives. So those are a little bit older, but I see the traces there. can definitely confirm it's only X4 connectivity. So what makes the Aces Hyper that little bit more special compared to, say, these devices? Well, let's crack open these four screws and find out what makes it so cool. And definitely take note, those are really small. You don't want to lose those uh, particular mounting screws. Very delicate. Okay, let's go for... Oh, that does look very neatly presented. There it is, the full PCB. Now, key features, we have a fan. There's our four slots. We have little standoffs here to secure our NVMEs, which is pretty cool. We have all the different lengths. Obviously, our X16 connectivity there as well. Nice to see the M.2 slots, and obviously, there's quite a few capacitors there. But this particular model does not have power loss protection. And obviously, there's our controller for the fan. That does produce quite a bit of force and we have uh, hard drive indicator lights way off on the far left as well and m.2s aluminium finish on this particular plate nice extruded finish we do have some ventilation and obviously in blue there we have our thermally conductive silicone helping those nvmes to retain nice cool temperatures being attached to the aluminium that's going to help Ooh. Ooh, that's got quite a good tune. Now, very important when you're unboxing hardware, you should always assess the tune. Now, this particular one has some interesting, yeah, very interesting sounds, but if anything, a little bit tinny, needs to be fine tuned, but nonetheless, pretty good. Now, one problem with the aluminium, if you scratch it, it uh, leaves a bit of a mark, and that mark is permanent. The joys of aluminium, it's really soft, so be very careful on this, it's quite fragile. But nonetheless, we will try to keep it in pristine condition as I, uh, yes, don't forget, subscribe. And let's have a look at the drives that are relevant. 
Now for this particular build, I'm gonna take Samsung 980 NVMEs. Now these particular NVMEs are great, running around 3,500 megabytes per second. These are the 870 QVOs, which will be featured in a video at a later date. Stay tuned for that. But in the meantime, some quick, should we say, advertising. This is our future video. We're gonna take this particular old master adapter and slot it into, well, I guess I shouldn't really tell you what just yet. Stay tuned, I'll show you a bit later in the video where it's gonna go. For now, here's some beautiful cinematic B-roll of the Aces adapter before we launch in to fitting our NVMEs. Now taking our Samsung 980s, actually no, I'll show you right now, why not? Let's give a quick teaser. This particular box needs to be unboxed. Let's grab our handy knife and Yep, that's beautiful. And while I'm here, this knife's actually really cool. It's a birthday gift. Really cool. Love it. Now launching in, this is ooh, Rescue. Okay, that's pretty cool. Definitely uh, good to support those uh, particular franchises. Well done. And there's a hardware manual, limited warranty. Fantastic. But we won't read that this time. And this is what we're here for. Now this is an Iron Wolf Pro 16TB, which is going to go into my Z440 case transplant NUS build. Uh, so no, not compatible with this particular adapter, but it is compatible with this adapter. And uh, stay tuned for a future video where I show you how to install this correctly. And yeah, obviously that's the wrong way around and anti-static's not helping us. Uh, pretty cool, the old master adapter comes with these hardware screws as well. Very handy to mount up lots of drives, including SSD. Really cool. Oh, manual. Yes. No, we have to read the instruction manual. That's always exciting. Uh, no, you, you know I was joking on that. That's definitely not good. Here's some tra trailer footage. That's the old master adapter slotting into the Fractal Defined 7XL with the HPZ 440. But that's a future video, you're not supposed to see that now, we'll save that for another time. In the meantime, back to this instructions. Okay, let's go for it, 980s, knife, cut, install. Let's do it. Now two of these uh, did ask for them to be censored, hopefully that's worked okay. Let's uh, do the censoring here, okay, perfect, yes, ah yes, that's, that's definitely it there. I don't, don't know if it really matters if you secure the part numbers there, but nonetheless, we'll make the effort. Saves uh, editing it out later. Okay, there it is, the Samsung 980s. These are quite unique because they lack a DRAM chip within this particular module. Uh, so DRAM lists is the description, but they do have a host memory buffer, which helps to sort of offset that performance decrement. But these are pretty good value and generally, yeah, that's okay. We can take rid of that now. It's really hot, not very uh, conductive, but We'll quickly install these NVMEs. I only have two on hand. If you want to see more, check out a previous video where I actually tested four NVMEs. But for now, let's go back to our stock box here. Where's those screws? There they are, excellent. We're only gonna need two for now. Let's uh, eye out these. There should be a standoff. There's a standoff. We'll insert that into the length of these, which are 2280. Uh, check out, you can definitely fit 2210s, which are a little bit less common, but we'll go for the 2280s in terms of size. Now there's our first one mounted, that looks pretty good, but I will say there is an air gap underneath. So check out a related video where I actually installed thermally conductive silicone underneath the NVMe. That could be a worthy upgrade for thermal control. Uh, but I've already tested this adapter in, in the future, or in the past technically, and it actually ran okay. Uh, thermals were really good. But nonetheless, we are done. That is fully installed, and so far so good. The aluminium still looks pretty good. We do have to pull off the, oh, I just damaged the thermal conductive silicone there, that's okay. Be very careful, that pad is really soft. Okay, oh, yeah, no, we've got to remove the blue insulation tape, that would create a mess otherwise. Okay, there it is, perfect. Okay, so slotting this back in, very easy to fit, four mounting screws, I'll just do this one-handed while uh, flexing with the other one, and let's finish that off. I definitely stress, you've got to be careful on these, use uh, very conventional screwdrivers, and definitely be careful getting those nice and square, otherwise you will absolutely be in a world of pain of these strip. Uh, so that's definitely not good, not talking from experience, that's definitely not something I would do or recommend. But it does happen, it's horrible. Okay, so let's go for the next step, which is going to be really, really cool, because... There's some cinematic B-roll, enjoy that while we're there. Oh, no, how, what? That happened already. I, that wasn't even me, I'm... I thought the gloves would be enough to protect it. Anyway, so there's a fan power switch. If that gets a bit noisy or irritating, you can always toggle that off. And obviously there's the four indicators there, which will be on our rear IO, which is kind of cool as well. But for now, where is this adapter going? Well, this is my HBZ240, and yes, it's a workstation, and yes, that's a gaming case. Leon Lee, pretty cool. Oh, 11, but let's go for it. I'm gonna see if I can find a 
dynamic way to mount this. This is a riser adapter for the GPU typically, as you can see the GPU is uh, vertically mounted. But I'm going to try and install this particular adapter in a similar manner. Now I'm not sure if it's going to work, but it's worth a try while we're here. Uh, definitely worth a try. Now this particular GPU is absolutely fantastic. I think we're coming up on nine years, the EVGA 970 served me really well. That's GTX, not RTX, very important as well. But right now, uh, mm, okay, no, that's that's not quite going to work. Plus, uh, that particular adapter there's on the way. So let's take that one out. What is this adapter? Well, it's another NVMe adapter, take note. This is the Jehi air-cooled NVMe adapter, which can also only take one NVMe, despite the X16. Uh, very deceptive there, but it's not actually X16. But let's go for it. The moment of truth. Does it fit? Yes. Perfect. Let's mount it, secure it, and now we should have at least two NVMEs on one lane. Is that right? Did someone check this? Who, who wrote the script? Is it, oh, there's no script. Okay, that might be the problem. There is a slight, uh, shall we say, glitch. Unfortunately, that particular motherboard does not support bifurcation. Wait, what's bifurcation? Well, bifurcation is where the PCIe lane is divided up into, shall we say, segments. And because of this problem, we have to use a different motherboard. This particular one's the HBZ840 workstation. There's a hypercard slotted in to slot 5, I do believe. Maybe it was slot 6, I forget. But very important, you must check bifurcation. Now, on the note of uh, future content, I, I feel like a teaser is appropriate. UPS, can you run your system without power? Well, if you've got one of these UPSs, you sure can. Stay tuned for a future video where we go through UPS. Uninterruptible power supply for your gaming rig. Pretty cool. Definitely worth getting these. Uh, very, very valuable. Now, another future teaser. This is the HPZ 440 case swap. Uh, or is it the HPZ 840 case swap? That's the 840 motherboard there. That is one huge motherboord. Fills up the Fractal Define 7XL to near perfection, minus that corner there. That's a little bit tight there, but uh, maybe it's worth cutting out the panel if you were to try and mount this. Lots of other technical problems. Whoa, who mounted that SSD? That's definitely not my handiwork. Uh, yeah, that's not the final mounting. Don't worry about it. But either way, back to the Z440. That fits like a glove. Uh, but that's all in the future. Stay tuned, working on those. But for now, here is... How to set up those NVMEs. So I'm going to do two tests. The first one is a non-RAID connection. So that's just the two Samsung 980 one terabyte drives all by themselves, non-RAID configuration. So giving us a net of two terabyte. But then later on, we'll also test a RAID zero configuration, which is going to pull those two drives to give us double the speed or theoretically double the speed, maybe triple, we'll find out. Uh, stay tuned for the benching. But there it is, very easy. Go to disk management to create these. Must initialize them before you can do anything funny, but there it is. Now I'm gonna do disk speed test. Very easy software to use. This is from Blackmagic Design. Really, really cool. Being able to optimize your drives for video editing in particular, but obviously this is applicable beyond that as well. Very easy to find on the website. Once you know where it is, it actually took me a while to find it, to be honest, it wasn't that easy. Now the next one here is Crystal Disk Mark, which is also really, really cool software. Definitely check out the URL for this one as well, highly recommend. You got some different types or styles to go for. Let's quickly check out the specifications of this 980 NVMe. Very, very cool. They have a nice performance per dollar. The particular 980s do not have DRAM, they have a host memory buffer, which isn't quite as good as the DRAM alternative, but at one terabyte we can net around 3500 and 3000 megabytes per second, and we have a very solid 600 terabytes written lifetime on these particular NVMe. So overall, pretty good bang for buck. Okay, that's not too bad. 3500 on read and 2900 on write. That's megabytes per second, so not too shabby. Now, next disk test here is going to be ATTO or Atto Disk Benchmark. This one's really powerful as well. Very, very easy to find. Check out where to find this one online as well. Very, very cool software. It checks multiple different sizes of file, and by the end of it, we get a really nice demonstration of all the different speeds depending on, should we say, packet sizes of our transfers which is really cool. Now that's three different results, but there is one more final step, which is going to be really useful, which is 
to check real life file transfers. I think that's really important because sometimes these speed checks are for non-realistic transfers. Let's see what it's like with an actual file transfer. Now this is for 80 gigabyte of 4A video files. And right now that's looking pretty reasonable, netting around 340 megabytes per second. I'm gonna call that a win on a transfer speed. But surely we can get more speed. I'm hopeful the RAID 0 configuration will net an even higher performance. Okay, now for one final test, which is a about a 1 gig mixed folder full of lots of random files. Okay, we're still needing a pretty decent speed. And then, oh, there's lots of small files there. They begin to bottleneck our speed. So keep that in mind for these large transfers. But that's the end of that. Now we need to delete the volume. Yes, all the data is going to vanish. Because I want to test a RAID 0 configuration. Let's get rid of all of it. We must clear both drives, then merge them. And we're going to do RAID 0, which is a stripe volume. So the idea here is the data will be allocated between both NVMEs and it turns into one drive within our operating system. Now this should give us a nice performance boost because now the files will be stored or rather shared between two drives. So we'll call it RAID 0 and let's go for it. Now there is one, shall we say, negative on this. Uh, this setup is going to take ages. Uh, forget how long maybe an hour hour and a half just to clear this so if your drives are larger or if you've got more nvmes be prepared for that to take way longer to complete but either way while this is running let's check with chat GBT. what are the benefits of a raid zero configuration with the asus hyper m.2 v2 adapter well let's see what it says well that doesn't look too bad Placing NVMe should see increased speed, we should see enhanced write performance, reduced load times, particularly on certain games or applications, maybe improved productivity, video editing, that's the main benefit for me, performance enhancements there, but there are some negatives, no redundancy, cost can be a factor as well, but over and check out the different RAID types from RAID 0 all the way to RAID 10, but for today we're just testing out RAID 0, which is striping, combining multiple drives to give us pools of storage across all those drives netting higher speeds but high now let's launch in and select our new raid zero drive and see how it performs disk speed test okay that's a much better drive transfer rate but ah oh, that's still not quite as high as i would have hoped so sitting on around maybe just shy of 4000 maybe as low as 3500 oh that's not good for write and read but the speed is going to be very specific to transferring one particular file size so Blackmagic allows you to set the file size this particular one is one gigabyte at the moment so that's pretty reasonable speeds we've seen a slight gain dare I say maybe double the speed compared to what we had before give or take so that's not too bad let's try crystal disk mark I'm hoping for a nice speed boost here as well but and now let's go for some past data from the NVMe adapter shootout. For already tested the Asus Hyper M.2 with some ADATA Legend 800 NVMEs. These were 2 terabyte NVMEs and we actually netted around 8,000 megabytes in zero configuration pooling for NVMEs. Now the current data around 7,000 megabytes read is not too far off the previous data which is good to see. This is another debris on this NVMe. Now, if you haven't seen this video already, definitely check it out where we compared four NVMe adapters. You'll definitely find that of interest if you've enjoyed this video. If you have enjoyed the video, don't forget like and subscribe. Very important, it helps the channel to grow. Now, just looking through the final data here, we have the ATTO disk benchmark running away and confirming some pretty solid speeds. Overall, pretty happy with pulling the two 980 NVMEs into one RAID 0 pool. That has given some solid performance. Feel free to leave any comments or questions down below. Forza Motorsport. Uh, yeah, the footage isn't great at the moment, but still sorting this out. Really, really fun. Pushing the HP Z840 to its limits and pushing the brand new 2023 Nissan Z to its limits as well. But man, Forza driving, it's a really special experience. Is that like seven collisions in one round? Man, that's intense. Take it easy out there. I'll see you on the next one. Stay tuned for more content.